Racing sports writer Chris Yukis, and I'm here with sports editor Kevin Klum and sports writer Jared Bell. And today on NT Prep Preview, we're going to take a look at the area's remaining football playoff teams and catch up on state cross-country scene. Kevin, Ottawa's two teams have remained undefeated with first-round playoff victories. What's this week got in store for the Pirates and the Crusaders? Well, first up this week, Ottawa is going to take on Rock Island at 2 p.m. on Saturday. It's going to be a pretty tough test for the Pirates. Uh, Rocky is 8-2, and two, and they're, as everybody knows, a very traditional powerhouse in the state of Illinois. Uh, they used to be in this situation, so uh, it could be a, a nice test for Ottawa. Marquette finally gets out of the Northeastern <laughs> Athletic Conference after playing a conference team last week. They'll uh, be hosting Forreston, who's 8-2, and two, and also uh, uh, usually makes some pretty good playoff runs. So we'll see how the Crusaders do this week. We also have Rocky, too, from the Western Big Six Conference, which is a very tough conference, and they won that conference. So it's a great win uh, for them and a really good team. And like we said before, Marquette is finally getting out of the conference. So we'll finally find out whether they're that good or not. I mean, you hate to say that at this point in the season, the team is 10-0, and 0, you don't know whether they're that elite or not. But you'll, you'll definitely find out this week because they finally have a, a good opponent that should challenge them outside of the conference. And Boy Lamoille also sailed to a first-round playoff win. Jared, will the Clippers find calm waters in their second round playoff game? Well, if you go based on seeds, they should. Um, they face the number eight seed, Orion, who I believe was fourth or fifth in their conference, which is the West Central Conference, the same conference that Monmouth Roseville was from, and they beat St. Bede. Um, so if you go on seedings, you, they should. Um, it'll be a very good chance, a test. Um, you would hope that they would be able to win and move on. But at this point in the postseason, you never know. I mean, it's always a week by week thing. So hopefully they can and, and get to the quarterfinals. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, NT Prep Preview Powerhouse Players. Roll that tape, Matt. Powerhouse Power Players of the Week. Of the week. Of the week. <laughs> Powerhouse Players of the Week. Powerhouse Players of the Week. How's that? Well, the biggest performer for last week, at least for, for uh, one of the Ottawa teams, was Marquette running back Curtis Johnson. Uh, Dirty Curdy, as you like to call him, had a great game on the ground. He scored a touchdown on the first play of Marquette's win last week. Um, in all, he finished with 177 yards rushing and three TDs. I believe about 164 of that was in the first half, and he only had the other 13 in the second half because they didn't really need him in the second half, and they started to pull some of the players. His 177 yards were about 60 more yards rushing um, than the entire Luther North team had by themselves, so he was a great player last week. He continued his really strong season. We also have uh, Amboy Lamoille quarterback Tyson Powers, who, based on his last name, he got some interesting <laughs> headlines this week because he uh, accounted for four touchdowns for the Clippers, and so you know how everybody's saying they powered past uh, Seek a North Shore Country Day. Where he powered his um, way to four touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, all that kind of cheesy stuff, you know. But he threw for 77 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 68 yards and a pair of scores. So a big day for Tyson. And last but not least is Michael, the big show, Hermosillo. <laughs> the Pirates senior had 211 yards rushing, which puts him up to 1804 on the season, and added three TDs to bump his total up to 28 this year for the 10-0 Pirates as they cruise to a first-round playoff win. Football is not the only sport entering the postseason crunch time as a contingent of area runners will race Saturday at Peoria's Detweiler Park for the IHSA State Meet. Two teams, the Marquette Boys and the Henry Midland Girls, will take their whole squads there and be joined by solo qualifiers including Alex Pettis from Henry Midland and Ryan Taylor of BV. In the Class 2A girls race, LP's Megan Krolak will represent the Lady Cavaliers while in 1A girls action, BV's Reagan Widener. Danny Arrett of Marquette and Fieldcrest Maria Baldwin will do their best to reach all state status. Thanks for watching NT Prep Preview and check us out next week while we look at more football playoff action. Playoffs! And take a look at the upcoming winter sports split. Check us out at www.newstrib.com backslash sports. <laughs> <laughs>